What's happening, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? It's been a minute uh, and definitely excited to, to be out here today. Uh, Rev, what's up? What's up? <laughs> I'm phenomenally well, graced, great. I'm doing fine. I'm doing extremely well. Or, or, or should I do like a Pentecostal answer? By God's grace, Bless. he's sustaining me. <laughs> no, the Pentecostal answer is blessed and highly favored of the Lord. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Yes. Blessed and highly now, favored and he's sustaining now, me. <laughs> you you, you, you got to put a vibe. You got you to gotta do it the right way. got to be blessed and mm -hmm. highly favored. You gotta look spiritual. So let me let, let, <laughs> let, let, let me do that. I'm blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. Come on, Shakata Yanda Sika. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we mean it. We mean it, guys. Please don't don't shoot us. We really we really are sold to Jesus and all that, and then some more. So please just just know that Coach and I uh, are real. So you know. We're still friends and we're still brothers and we can still talk like real human beings. Not every answer is exactly. interjected yeah, by no, some just, spiritual just be you know, as real overtone. As we can get. <laughs> <laughs> correct, correct. I'm really excited to really... Um, I think you and I have 50 million pending conversations that we have to bring to the table and just make sure we correct. have conversations with people like we always do. But sometimes yes. I think... With, yes. with what we do, life gets really busy that you really just don't have the time to turn on your phone and say, let me do something. But yes. I guess it's, it's part yes. of our assignment. These are conversations that we can't mm. dodge, mm. we can't avoid. You no. know, and one of the things I love is, is when I sit with uh, brothers and friends is I don't call them interviews. We have conversations, you know, so... Correct. Everybody that is, by the way, everyone that is joining in, you know, on Rev's platform, my platform, please welcome. Do, do me a favor. And that's a thing. When we start talking as brothers and all that, we just begin to talk. So do us a favor, share Correct. and invite as many people as possible. Tag your friends because this is mm. going to be a very powerful mm. conversation. Tag your friends. We're actually going to go yeah. into some major potholes. Huh? So this is going to exactly. be heavy. Exactly. We're, exactly. we're just giving this... some warning in advance. This is heavy, <laughs> heavy. Put it's been on up. our spirits. You exactly. know what I mean? And, 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 and actually, to those of you that are watching us, uh, Coach and I had very deep conversations these last two days because of some issue that was going on. And that issue is what has prompted this. This, this was after we spoke yesterday with Coach. To be honest, I slept, yes, but not really. And this morning I woke up and I said, mm, Coach, let's just do it <laughs> let's just go and talk <laughs> about know. this because this is heavy stuff this is heavy we can't keep you, this you anymore let's talk very early you, know? you sent me a message very early <laughs> mm -hmm. because i was just you know yesterday after yesterday my mind was just it really really i was if I had to be, uh, if I had to be carnal, I was disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> I was disturbed. So, so, so this morning I said, Coach, let's why make is, it happen. Why is let, our conversation let, too close to your heart? The conversation we're having today. Ah, uh, good. Because this conversation, as you know very well, Coach, borders on a number of issues, and I think the biggest, if you ask me, the biggest is integrity. Now, let me define integrity, because maybe some people don't know what integrity means in its true sense. Integrity means being whole, being complete, being whole, being sturdy, being, um, being firm. That's what integrity means. So, but, but in this sense, it means wholeness. And what does that mean then? That means the person that you are in private is virtually the same as the person you are in public. That's what integrity is. So meaning my words and my actions are not far from each other. If I say something, I come through with what I say. If, I, if you find me in my workplace, I am as I am at church. If you find me in my home, I am mm. as I am in public. That for me is integrity. It means being whole and what you see is what you get. That's the issue. Now, why is the topic of integrity here? Because what I have noticed is that I think for many people, that is a massive shortfall. The things that they project, project and portray in public is miles from who yeah. they are in real life. The things that they project 
in their churches and in their communities is miles from who they are in real life. And, and, and for me, that's what this whole thing, you know, the topic of fake love marriage, what's that? That means something fake is hypocritical. Something fake is something that is one thing, yet it's another. So it is projecting what looks genuine, but when you go inside, it's useless. It's what Jesus said when he said, outside you have nice decorated tombs, but inside full of rotten bones. For me, yeah. that's what I'm speaking about. So we're saying that in the love marriage space, there's so much of that. And, you know, what we've come across recently has prompted this conversation. That's what didn't make me sleep last night into it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really, really interesting. And and, yes. and and I know the conversation is about, um, but but don't you feel, and, and, and I'm going to start with myself because I feel you and the number of people, uh, you know, uh, you and the number of people have come against me to attack me on being the single for too long, you know, uh, and I'm I, re I, I, I repent publicly today and I'll explain <laughs> why. <laughs> <laughs> including your brother Shkapuasha. Shkapuasha. I know that so, today I'm going to repent you know, publicly. So, As we go on, I'll explain. A lot of you married people, uh, you, Lewis Shkapuasha, and the number of people, you are always on our case to get married. Even when, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know whether you want us to create wives that are better for ourselves. So you put, <laughs> like, we are sister and Jesuses. You want people to get married. I kind of feel like, society communities churches and i'll tell it in even on the side of a church the church feels the church would rather have people getting married even if it's not a good marriage so that they can have yeah. testimony that yes. in 2021 we had 50 marriages in this church but you don't even <laughs> assess the quality of the marriages this is Correct. why you know there's, there's a lot to blame so i don't know what's your take on that yeah. no it's it's heavy dude and i mean from yesterday i mean yesterday's incident uh Prom prompted a number of uh, conversations you and I had. And they're very serious, these conversations. And I think for the sake of guidance, let me begin with the first instance. So I'm going to begin with the first instance. This is a colleague of ours in the, in the UK. Yeah. It turns out that this gentleman has been running an extremely successful ministry. And I mean extremely successful ministry. Highly followed, highly revered. But the challenge with this gentleman is he's been single for a long time. I mean, very long. And when I say very long, I mean very long. I mean, this brother is now, I think, 42, 43, somewhere there. And he's been in ministry for the last 20 years and no signs of marriage. So you know the shikapashas and the revolters of this world you know, we're always throwing this, this pressure on the brother. And that's why I'm saying that I've repented today because of the story I'm about to say. <laughs> yeah. And so yesterday, yesterday I happened to, to connect with another gentleman who's a wonderful friend to that particular gentleman uh, over there in the UK. And we, we got speaking. And uh, when speaking, something profound happened. That gentleman began to recount to me the circumstances behind a certain incident that took place with this yeah. gentleman uh, some, some, some one or two years ago. Now, this gentleman, brother of ours, who is a very successful minister of the gospel, was, uh, had, uh, had an accident, a very, very bad accident. It was horrendous. And uh, this accident, the vehicle was a total write-off. But by God's grace... He walked out alive. He literally had just a scratch on his arm. But it mm. took one hour for him to be freed by those jaws of death. Thankfully, there they have those powerful, um, what you call them, the uh, fire brigade people. So they came through, fire people broke the car with the jaws of death and took him out. I'm sure you see those things on TV. So, but he was safe, like completely safe. There's nothing wrong with him. And uh, it, was, it was a good thing to see that, that he was safe. Uh, and, and he was, then the gentleman that I was speaking to had a word with him. And uh, the guy was, uh, had a meltdown, a literal meltdown. I mean, and it was strange. Like, what, what happened? Meltdown. 
You know, because this is a superman. This is a superman of God. This guy prays and fire comes down. This guy flows so powerfully. People love this man. But he had a meltdown, Coach, Coach Ted. Total meltdown. Yeah. And for three days, my friend had to, to be with him and talk to him and help him and, and start helping him come to terms. And there's some very interesting things my friend said to this gentleman. Now, mm -hmm. what happened? What led to the meltdown? What led to that situation? Because when the police did their investigations after the accident, A, mm -hmm. he was driving alone. There was no car, nothing on the road. B, yeah. it was late in the morning, late in the night, like a.m., the early hours mm -hmm. of the morning. It was in the a.m. Three, he flipped. The car was driven with no skid marks straight into a barrier. Wow. So, and then when the, and so, so, the, so the police got the distinct impression that this guy either had a meltdown as he was driving or he was intending to end his life. So what led such a powerful man of God, mm. powerful man of God, to put himself in such a situation? What led him to that? So upon further inquiry, I learned that this man of God there in the UK had a relationship with another in fact, he's of East African origin. He's from Kenya. So he had uh, he had been running his ministry for a while. And then you know how it is when running these ministries. There are so many women around assisting men, people just, you know, the, you know the typical Pentecostal yeah. charismatic kind of uh, ministry thing. So so there's all these ushers and, and armor bearers. You, you know the deal. So one of those sisters who was an usher armor bearer <clears throat> was... Uh, really liked this man of God. So she began to support him financially, as they all do, and all that jazz, giving to the church, <laughs> super giver, you know, the whole thing. And um, I don't know if I can justify what I'm about to say, but let's just say the gentleman was indebted, <laughs> if I can use that word. He was indebted mm -hmm. to this great uh, support that he was getting from yeah. the sister. So, so what he did is through a number of factors that are, that are not clear, he found himself getting engaged to this lady. He got engaged, and after being engaged, they, uh, they, 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 the relatives from Kenya took, you know, whatever they needed to take customary, you know, things to the relatives in Kenya, because he's also Kenyan, and, and that's how they, they did the connection out there in Kenya, right? They, they did the yeah. whole thing so it's happening it's happening it's happening <laughs> this is going to be happening very soon you know now yeah. here's the funny part now coach turns out our friend already had a relationship going mm. with another sister now this sister wasn't really in the church picture but she was there yeah and the irony is that he actually loved that Cassista more than he did this super giver lady. So he found mm. himself in a dilemma where the sister, and I'm going to use those terms, sister super giver. So the sister was who he was fond of hanging out with. The yeah. super giver was a super influencer even in the church. So everybody around the church, all these people were just, hey, super giver, hey, my busa, hey, you know, this, this, <laughs> that narrative, huh? Yeah. But my brother was more inclined to our sister on the side. Yeah. And so in that dilemma, what uh, the gentleman would do is he'd go hang out with this uh, sister. Now, as he hang out with that sister, because of the situation that was now becoming obvious, he had to be hanging out with her secretly. So they would go outskirts of town and hang out at a lodge and chill. And I'm really not going to say what was happening in those instances. I have no idea. But what I know is the brother, I, I think, is an upright brother. That's what I know about him. And he's got a very good testimony. At least that's what I know. So... Mm. I don't know. I've never heard stories about him. So we'll leave it at that. So unfortunately, 
on a, on the material day super giver gets intel maybe maybe a couple of days before i don't know but she gets intel that hey <laughs> mm -hmm. your 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 fiance this side is got a can other chick that he mm. frequents to use the zambian terminology frequents you yeah. know this side so that's how this brother said sorry this lady said really so what does she do she does a bit of investigations and then she uses some smart clever strategies and and and, and finally gets to the place where it's rumored they would chill and asks you know just asks one of those workers there that as soon as um as soon as these guys come and just give me an, an alert so mm -hmm. on the material day he goes to visit after he finishes his ministry because he does ministry late so like 8 22 hours because a lot of times in the uk those be those meetings are doing the evening late and yeah. stuff like that and and so he finishes that then he goes to visit the sister at their usual hangout spot and then super giver follows secretly yeah and then super giver gets to the place and she the, she's beckoned that way room number whatever mm -hmm. and so super giver goes to room number and she's already told what's going on so she gets her phone switches it on to start recording knocks on the door and has some and and, and they say room service and they open the door and sure enough there's our brother there is our sister and here is super giver and i can tell you there was a serious showdown super giver thumped sister it was so bad then sister beat up super giver grabbed the phone broke it and there was a serious altercation wow. of magnanimous proportions the the this colleague of ours the pastor was in such shock he, he never expected that he was in such shock that what he did is he went into a cathartic reaction he just grabbed his keys went jumped into his car and drove away and it was in that driving away that led to this driving straight into a barrier so i don't know if he went into a daze i don't know if he was so absent-minded i really don't know what happened but he had that so my colleague who was counseling him who was helping him through that crisis for three four days because this gentleman had a total breakdown he was like yeah. oh my god what am i gonna do now this you know this is my whole life i've been a minister i i don't do anything else my work is around god i love the lord blah blah what am i gonna do this you know he was so messed up by it if this goes mm. out there you know and then that brother told him you know what don't worry about this thing this will be worked out but here's my advice to you my brother please do not force yourself to get married never marry because people tell you to do so and this gentleman our friend actually told him and said i believe some people are born eunuchs for jesus maybe you're one of those maybe you're one of those people that doesn't need to get married and if you're going to force yourself to get married you will die yeah. you'll get into a relationship and it'll kill you so i think stop the whole marriage thing just operate the way you're operating until the time that the Lord himself will bring somebody to you and you will get an inner witness that that's the person. But please don't be pressured again. Unfortunately. So you can imagine, coach, when I, when I heard that story, I was shaken. I said, what? You know, and, and, and it's only the grace of God that everything was covered up. There were people that just covered everything up. I don't know what yeah. they did to that sister, and I don't know what they did to the super giver, but the whole thing was hushed. And people, people, the only story they know is that it was an accident. It was 2 a.m. Mm. He was tired because he's always doing ministry, so he crashed his car, you know, there in the U.K. So that's the story they know. But the, there's a whole group, inner group, that knows that this was a situation because of the confrontation and the yeah. back of it is because of this unnecessary pressure that this pastor found himself in of all these people always saying hey get married hey get mm -hmm. married and and because of the size of his ministry and where it has reached he, he felt compelled to kind of you know yield to that pressure and that's yeah. what it caused
So let's stop there first. You talk the night. I'll come with another two really depressing stories. <laughs> and, and, and I kind of feel like that's one of the biggest thing, you know, uh, with me when you talk about this conversation and what we are talking about is, um, and I don't want to divert. Uh, I'll give an example. Yes. Even in instances when we see on social media, uh, when there's a couple that, when there's a couple, you know, that strangles each other to death, kills, you know, shoots, you know, you know what people always say? Why, why didn't you divorce? You know, why didn't you just yeah. divorce? Why didn't yeah. you walk away from the marriage? But unfortunately, mm. when people want to walk away from these fake marriages, from these marriages that are not working, the same people are keeping them in the same place. So society yeah, has yeah, yeah. a double standard on how we mm -hmm. address these issues. Because look at the story you're just from telling about, and, and, and those are like many other stories. There's too yeah. many fake marriages. There's too many, uh, you know, marriages where people are getting married because you want to please people. I think our communities are so obsessed with, you know, seeing people get married, you know, by, mm. by or crook, you know, yes. so that you can have something to be able to say, uh, you know, oh, this person is married. One of, you know what? One of the questions that I ask Rev is every time I hear people tell me, why don't you just get married? Like I get the pressure. My question is always, mm -hmm. do you want me to get married so I can be happy or you want me to get married so that you can, you, you can say, we told him, see how he, his marriage is doing. You get, you get what I'm trying to say, you know, uh, yes. you know, you know, so, so most of the time, this pressure, look at what this gentleman landed himself. Now, mm -hmm. we're ready to God, we're having a conversation where he's alive. Yes. What if that was yes. the end? What if Can you Super imagine? Giver came with AK-47 in that hotel room? There was going to be a total you. massacre. But we yes. always don't think through these things every time mm. we're, we're looking at these fake marriages and forcing people to get married. Because these are critical things. And there's so many, of, so many people out here there that are getting married in two relationships for the wrong reason. And most of it is because you want to impress people that are close to you. Yeah. You know, yeah. your, your, your parents are telling you, mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. You know, you know I, I am going to die. So, you know, you know, like they put all the, the, the burden on you to be able to get married. And we're not teaching people how to get married the healthy way. This Agreed. is why there's disaster. I mean, I can... There's, there's disaster out there when it comes to marriages. And, and I don't want people to get it wrong that, you know, you, 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 we are shooting down marriages. What we are shooting down... No, we're down not. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a dressing. happily married guy. Eh? Yeah. I'm a happily yeah, married I guy. Actually, I, I was actually teasing you that before you came to the show, before you showed up on this show, his wife <laughs> brought you a bucket of cake for the husband to, to, to eat before. <laughs> Miss Siwa showed up here and gave, said, babe, eat something before. And I was out there teasing and says, you know, the beauties of marriage. So I totally agree. You know, there's, you know, but we need to put a disclaimer because sometimes people need to be told because they don't understand. I'm a lover yeah, of yeah, marriage. Yeah. When, you're, when you're talking about being eunuchs, I said, that's not my calling. I am wired for marriage. <laughs> correct, I'm correct. Not a eunuch. I am wired for marriage. I love love. I love marriage. I believe in marriage. But just mm. because we love marriage and we believe in marriage doesn't mean that it should stop us from addressing the fake marriages and fake relationships. Which are in the thousands right now. Yeah. And one of the posts I put up last year is I want a real marriage and not a publicity stunt. Because Unfortunately, that's what we're seeing today. Exactly. Too many so of we those. are getting married because it's for publicity. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we're getting married, you know, because the pressure is real, right? We're getting married yes, because we I want know. to show people that, mm -hmm. you know, we want to be accepted. And in the end, people are getting into fake marriages. People are going to Dubai holidays. People are going to studios to take photo shots to show the world that I am happily married when you hate the person you wake up next to. You, you know, you, you know, you know, you, you, some people are, you know, committing suicide. Because yes. you can't even stand, you know, uh, the person that you sleep next to or the person you said I do to, you know, lovers become roommates, you know. I'm and when you. we address these critical issues that are happening in these fake marriages, people feel like, oh, we're just attacking. Oh, we just want to say whatever we want to say. 
You know, there, there are certain people, and personally have said it, you know, I don't apologize. When I get married, I, there are certain people I don't want to see around my marriage because I don't <laughs> want to see them. You know, I have no apologies. You know, hit me if you like. Yes. Who cares? Yes. Because I don't want you to sell me a lie. I don't want I'm you to sell you. me things. And, I'm not, and we're not demanding for perfect marriages. We are simply saying there has to be a proper standard of how you run a home and how you decide to say, me, I can testify. I would, if I wanted to, I would have gotten married a long time ago. I've I agree. Lot, you know, I've had a lot of opportunities. But one of the things that for me is a blessing is I think God gave me the spirit of what the hell, you know. So I, I, I don't care how much you say you won't like me uh, because I chose not to take this decision or I chose not to pull the plug and I don't want this relation. I really don't care because I'm trying to avoid falling in the trap of what we are talking about today. Which brings us now to the other, the yeah. second uh, narration. Yeah. And you know, that narration is exactly what you're saying. The falling into the trap. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, th there's two individuals. Uh, these are now in the U.S. These are in the yeah. U.S. They are ministers of the gospel. Both are ministers, husband and wife. Yeah. And uh, they recently finalized their divorce. Okay. Yeah. They finalized their divorce. I, I was quite shocked because these two individuals in their own right are both lovers of the Lord. It's not something you need to ask. It's not something you need to question. You can see it. You can feel the fruit, at least spiritually. You can feel these people love Jesus. These are not, these are not fakers. These are not fake papas. These are real people. They love Lord, the Lord. The man, yeah. of, the, the husband is a powerful man of God. The wife is a powerful woman of God. But they went through a divorce. And yeah. so in my, in my shock and incredulity, because I never, ever, ever in my wildest imagination thought that they would divorce. I mean, I used yeah. to, like you're saying, I used to admire these people and go, wow, wow, <laughs> you know, our friends, wow, yeah. powerful woman, powerful man, wow, yeah. you know. And then they go through this divorce, like they agree to divorce. Now, theirs was a very amicable, uh, uh, no acrimony. They just agreed to separate. I was like, hey. yeah. And then they divorced. So I'm like, what the? Anyway, <laughs> let, let me find out. This, this, these are Christians, so I need to hear why they are divorcing. Because I know what the word of God says. Love is patient. Love yeah. is kind and all that jazz in First Corinthians 13. Mm, does not count, shanuko, does not mm. covers all sin, shanuko, endures and all that jazz. So I'm like, these guys know these scriptures. They can literally recite them. So why are they mm. not living First Corinthians 13? So yeah. I now go and make some inquiries. And here is what I learned, coach and listeners out there or viewers. Yeah. In the past, the lady was in another relationship, this woman of God. She was in another relationship. And it was a very strong relationship. It was going somewhere. Mm. But somewhere along the way, the gentleman moved to another state. You know, America is very big, 53 states. So, you know, you can literally move to another state and it's almost like you've moved to another country. You know what I mean? Huh? So he moved to another state. This lady remained where she was waiting that this guy will work things out and she'll go join him in that state and they'll start their life together. Yeah. Well, this became one year, went to two years, went to three years. And, 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 and to be honest, even I have issues with prolonged distant marriages. I have very big issues yeah. with that. So it went to three years. So in that process, this lady by design of fate finds herself in another church and she begins mm. to serve there. And as she's serving in that church, waiting for that brother who doesn't seem to, be, to have any plan, who doesn't seem to have anything going, finds himself, finds herself rather in this church. And then in that church, she begins to flow yeah. and do ministry. And then in the process, there's a connection with uh, another gentleman at that church. And then now the prophecies start because it was one of those to borrow... Uh, Pastor Jacob Ntuntu's term that people find so annoying, it was a Spitfire prophetic church. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Spitfire, you know, Spitfire prophetic churches. 
So, so, so in there, there are lots of prophecies. Hey, Chani, good this, good that. Yeah. So the prophecies started to come. You are getting married this year. You are getting married this year. And then, you know, before long, the other pastor was also a single. Hey, you are getting married. And then before long, there's just this invisible peer pressure. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, hey, Pastor A, Pastor B, come on, guys. Hey, hey. And then there's like a pressure. You know, the one from outside. Hey. You know, the type where people set you on blind dates and just, boom, you know, those kind of things. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, like, like I think let's encourage these people because they are not getting it. So let's 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 add some money you know, to the fire. <laughs> so, <laughs> so wow, you know, just do whatever it takes just to get these people to see. You know, <laughs> open your eyes, brothers. They're in the church right here. Come on, you know, sisters. So with all that pressure, and because of this uh, powerful woman of God did not see anything materializing with the brother over in the other state, she, she yielded, I think. That's what I'm going to say. She yielded to all that. And because, you know, she was in ministry and then there's this thing about credibility when you're not married, you know. You know the deal, coach. <laughs> you're in that boat. So, so there's this kind of thing, like, he's not married, you know. Uh. So... So unfortunately, you are muted. <laughs> you are muted, coach. So unfortunately, this um, this is how they ended up um, connecting now. And then, yeah. you know, went through the whole thing and then got married. Now, here's the sad part, coach. From the time they got married, this woman of God was not feeling the relationship. She was not That's feeling an ugly it. place to be at. It's an ugly place, brother. And then this... Man of God, and I hope loved. everybody that's listening to us really is listening that part. You know what I mean, huh? Because I'm sure to you're be, gonna read to be, to your be comments to be later. With someone who ain't feeling you, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. I mean, it's it's yeah. sorry to use this example, but it's a Will Smith scenario. <laughs> exactly. No <laughs> you know? I was about to say the same thing. It says you, you know what I mean. You, you know? become the. That's Will another Smith. conversation we're gonna be getting to soon. For, next for week. another day, correct? Yeah, correct. For another day. Yeah. So unfortunately, this. This man is trying. This woman is not feeling. Now, in the process, they're having kids. But uh, finally, you know what happens now, coach? You know yeah. how crafty the devil is? You know, Ephesians 6 says, you know, to, to you know, stand against the wiles and schemes and strategies and devices of the devil because he's always looking for ways. So the devil is very good at that. So here she is in a what I call a passionless and purposeless marriage. Not wow. a loveless marriage, because for me, love is overrated. Love is a very, very mental state. It's a mental yeah. thing. You either love someone or you don't. It's not about feelings. So, so using love and equating yeah, it to feelings is... I know a lot of people is, are going to argue is, with you, but somebody uh, yeah. actually posted that. There's somebody who put John could have said that we don't marry for people, we marry for purpose. Thank you. So there you are. So John is we're flowing. <laughs> so yeah. so a purposeless and passionless marriage. So mm -hmm. she finds herself in that position. And what does the enemy do? He's very good at this. He mm -hmm. brings back that cadut. The old flame. <laughs> like an old flame. Cabuela <laughs> boo. Kazipe is a more situation. And then here's the sad part. That guy never married. Now, here's the real complexity now. He never wow. married. And when they have a conversation, hey, what happened to you? You know me, I got married. Hey, what? to say, sorry. You see me, you were always the one. That's why I've never married. Wow. And that's a punchline. Um, like, no, then no, then it's like, boom. <laughs> in, in the words, in the words the, of uh, the girl the someone the on anointed. TV. She hasn't felt boom. in all the years. In the <laughs> <laughs> She comes alive. Exactly. <laughs> she has we she has what she has what we call the hippie jibbies. <laughs> you know <laughs> feelings that didn't exist before, which you thought yeah. had gone, just ignite from nowhere. Like boom, 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 boom. so poor woman finds herself now confused. You know what happened next? They started having an affair. Mm -hmm. Coach. They started having an affair. It started being an affair. 
But you imagine, this is a woman of God married to a man of God. They both love Jesus. They both mm. flow in their ministries. But mm. this woman of God finds herself in that unenviable place where she is completely taken by the fire that she is feeling in this adulterous relationship now. Wow. Mm? And, and now here's the sad part. The man comes to learn about this. They have a meeting. Sorry, sorry, Vasida. Cut that off. Don't do, don't do. Okay. They continue again. And then she relapses back into the relationship a second time. Now it's tricky. Now the elders are cold. Now the whole moon discusses the issue. The woman of God says, I'm sorry, sorry, no, please. I don't know what demon came over me. Yeah? Because Kai is pressure. We are a pastor with kids in a ministry. People look up to you. You yeah. are teaching about these things. How can you be in adults? Yeah. No, pray for me. They pray for her. They lay hands on her. <laughs> the whole works. Happy, yeah. are you ready to forgive? I'm ready to forgive. <laughs> so he forgives again. No, I'm just telling you the story. <laughs> okay, I'm... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so, so he forgives coach third time. So this time it's a crisis now, you know. So the, the, the pastor has to move out of the matrimonial home. Mm. And, uh, and uh, when they went to do counseling, then the lady just says it. Because in the previous times, there was no specificity as to who it is that she's in this adulterous affair with. So they were just yeah. dealing with the adultery. They were not dealing with the soul. So this time around, the husband now opens up to the counselors over there in the U.S. and tells the reality. And the counselors say, okay, you know what? Let's be real here. Why do you keep doing this? That's when now in the process of digging deep, that's when they got to the source. What was the source? A, I never really loved him. Uh, but you know, because of that time and, and what was going on, I thought maybe it's just me and, and my messed up feelings. I, I thought, so that's why I married him. So where are you right now? I'll be very truthful. When this man shows up, all my lights come on. Mm. When this husband, I'm with him, I don't feel the same. I've been forcing myself to feel, but I'm not feeling him. I say, wow. So thankfully, thankfully, okay, this is me. That, so, so this is not the position of the church. Please, I'm now talking as Rev. Water members. Thankfully, these two were sitting under a minister who then said, you know what? If this is your position, it is pointless to continue with this marriage. Dissolve it. L let this man go free. You go back and make your pursuits if that's going to work. There are consequences to this. And you have to realize there will be consequences. But I give you the freedom. And that's how that marriage was annulled. Now, this was all done relatively quietly. So many people don't know in the public yeah. the details. But that's how that marriage finished. So that's a second example of the fake love relationship dilemma. And society pleasing marriages and yeah. their consequences. Wow. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I mean, I mean, I have a lot of things to really um, jump in and excited to really just go into that. 
And I know there are some comments that everybody, please do me a favor as you're watching and listening to us, do me a favor, please share and tag in your people because Rev, the conversation we're having today is a reflection of so many homes, so many relationships, yes. so many marriages. Yes. You know, so yes. I know for a fact that it, this is going to be able to go into and save a lot of people relationships and just really just open your eyes and even you that are single because this is not specifically for people that are just married this is yeah. for people that yeah. are single people that are really thinking about that and i think for me my blessing is you know uh, and and i know i, I know i would like uh, i mean so that maybe before you break it down maybe to go to the last conversation and you know and then we break it down together uh, you know, okay. just, so yeah. the, the third scenario Now the third okay. scenario is very painful I mean that one whew, yes. That's what made me not sleep <laughs> The third scenario yes. is what actually made me not sleep And you know we talked about it Yeah, yeah. A colleague who is based in Australia yeah. Was found in an extramarital affair. Now, this colleague in Australia is a pastor. And so, as time and chance and opportunity would have it, you know how you, all of us here, were ministers. I mean, here we are, me and you, on a, on a show together. And somebody watches this, and next thing you get an inbox saying, Rev, how well do you know Stead? I'm like, I know him pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, said, I know i know i know him pretty well really yes well are you aware abc like huh? <laughs> you know so that's what happened to me like huh? I'm vouching for me. No. you know what i mean so there i am vouching for you and then now next thing i'm receiving all these messages so essentially this colleague in australia you know, is someone I know, and we did a picture together at one point, and then someone reached out and said, this colleague of yours was in an adulterous affair. Mm -hmm. And whilst I'm reeling in shock from the adulterous affair and trying to deal with that, here's what yeah. I learned. I learned that that colleague of mine was in what I'm going to say. You know the way Jesus said, Peter, the devil wanted to sift you like wheat. Yeah. You know, he was mm -hmm. being, he was sifted like wheat. He was yeah. chopped into pieces and left for dead. This is yeah. what happened to this colleague. So what happened to him exactly? What did he go through? This is mm -hmm. what I learned, coach. And this is what is so scary. And I think after this, that's where we'll now talk. Yeah. Many years ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago, this colleague got married. Now, when he was getting married, he married uh, a woman that's now also a woman of God. And as he married this lady, little yeah. did he know, eh, coach, little did he know that the lady he was marrying was in an active affair with his spiritual father. Let me put it plainly. Let me put it bluntly. The spiritual father was hammering the daughter in the spirit. <laughs> let, let that sink in. Let it sink in. Mm? Just imagine. <laughs> no, but you said you, you ah, Rev, please go on. <laughs> So imagine on the day of his wedding, on the day, now this is stuff he learned in hindsight, not then, he had no clue. On the day of his wedding, before she came to the wedding, the previous night, she was with this spiritual father. On the day of the wedding, he blesses them. They begin their marriage. He was the one, this is all learned in hindsight. He didn't know it at the time. He was the one that even sponsored, and they would say, no, this is somebody in the church has blessed you people with money. So he bankrolled the wedding, but he was hammering the, the, the brother's wife. Wow. Hmm? For five the years, spiritual. coach. The, the spiritual, the spiritual son. father, yes, the spiritual son's wife, both were children in this spiritual father's church. Hmm? And 
for five years, coach, five good years, as Kenyans would say, five good years. I think Nigerians also like saying that. Mm. He was in a continuous sexual relationship with this man's wife without his knowledge because that was their father in the Lord. So there would always be this thing that, no, I've gone to daddy's house or I've gone to the office to pray with daddy or whatever. And you're like, yeah, yeah, no, you know, yeah, that's fine. Wow. Now here's the worst part about it. That daddy was married. This is all cutting in Australia, in the African community circles. Now, Africa, Africans are doing fine in, in these uh, foreign states. In these diaspora the places, way. correct. They are representing. So, the, anyway. The <laughs> so, anyway, on the fifth year, this pastor decides to send that colleague of ours, who is also a pastor, to go to get his degree in theology at, in, in the US at some university there. You know, I think it was Dallas Theological Seminary or something, but he was sent out there to go and get his degree, you know. The guy is sent off. can she? The reason he was sent there was because, A, spiritual daughter got pregnant with the father, the spiritual father's child. One. Two, Spiritual father decided he's had enough with his marriage, so he sabotaged and destroyed his marriage. And then while spiritual son is in America, that's how spiritual daughter sends a letter to the husband in America to say, our marriage is over. There was never a marriage. There was never a marriage. So I'm done. I've gone. I've left. And I've already found someone else. So don't even bother. You know, Dear John on steroids, a Dear John letter on steroids, because it is a letter saying, when by the time you come, I'll be gone. No, this one was, don't even bother coming back because I've left and I've gone with our dad. He's now my husband. We're That's even true. getting married. Yes. We're even getting wow. married. So he's in the U.S., she gets married. And a couple of months later, baby. I mean, this thing shattered the brother. That's the right word to use. It destroyed something in him completely. And he's been on a path of recovery, but it's been very hard. And as I'm speaking to you right now, I know another case now, these are not, these are not uh, pastor type of thing, but it's just a similar scenario. Someone I know got married a, a couple of months ago. Now, here's what happened in that situation. That lady got in touch with another lady to be their matron, and that lady who was the matron was supposed to be taking care of everything and handling the case. Now, here's the irony. The matron's husband is friends with that young lady's sugar D. So the sugar D tells the friend to the friend who's married to the matron that that little young girl you see there in the mall, I'm the one sponsoring their wedding. I'm the one sponsoring their wedding. So this lady went ahead, got married to this brother who has no clue that the wife's sugar husband, whatever you call him, sugar daddy, whatever he is, bless her, is the one even sponsoring their wedding and hammering the girl. And in fact, he even said two days ago before the wedding, I went to hammer her. She was at my house, at my lodge, sorry. No, he's married. She was at my lodge. I was hammering her. Wow. This is the level of this society pleasing marriage fakeness that we have because you keep jumping now, into now, things you're not supposed to be in yes and can you imagine the day that that guy learns that when he was marrying his wife the wedding was sponsored by her boyfriend and he has affairs with her can you imagine the mental torture that kind of information can exactly. can cause
So this, exactly. this, and for me, this is what I think is the conversation now they are stead. Our conversation yeah. is, to what extent are we willing to f go into fake relationships True. for the sake of society? Yeah. Pleasing, pleasing your families, pleasing your friends. Mm. You, know, mm. you, you are jumping into, and then you want to spend the rest of your life you know, faking it and showing people you are happily married and you are in love, you know, but you're not dealing with these issues, you know. Well, you've heard cases and, where and people then, are 50, then, 55, they divorce. 55, you're like, come on, you guys have been together 25 years. You even have kids in university. Why are you divorcing? Yeah. There's because, because, I mean, at some point, it doesn't matter how long it takes because you've lived in this relationship because of betrayal. You've gone into, uh, you know, a lot of deeper things, you know, dealing with these issues that you have not been able to resolve. And, yeah. and, 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 then, and then with, I mean, it's, it's very sad because if you look at the picture of what you're giving, the first scenario that you gave out, I'm looking at three people that meet and fight at a hotel. Anything mm -hmm. is possible at that point. I mean, somebody mm -hmm. can pull up mm -hmm. nothing, somebody can get a gun, somebody can jump yeah. off the window, you know. Yes. And, and then how do we live with ourselves, the people that keep the rest of our lives yeah. for the rest of our lives? You know, because mm. these are people you keep cheering on. They have not made the decisions, but because you're trying to influence the decision of who they get married. I feel, mm -hmm. especially in the African circles, we are so obsessed about marriage, you yes. know, that we are such in a hurry to ignore everything that is happening. I was Every red flag. Exactly. You know, to for the sake of pleasing people, showing people that we, you know, we are married and we've got kids, but everything has been built on a shaky foundation, you Correct. know, because I feel this is why when you know that this person and I can really I can tell you, Rev, I can tell you, you know, I have. And, and unfortunately, sometimes you meet people you love, but because there's no purpose, you say I would rather walk away. I don't want to be with somebody I love and then we can do purpose together. You, you know, know what I mean, this and i think i saw another comment that i'm gonna put on the screen you know mm. uh, you know i hope you can see it i think from given yeah it i'm says, reading it out yes marriage is a heavy duty read it out. When you, you can read it out ref okay marriage is a heavy duty when you are with someone you don't genuinely love though love alone does not necessarily build a long-lasting mar marriage commitment trust and companionship are more important forever is too long to carry all these things serious with someone who does not complete who you are, I'm telling mm -hmm. you. So yeah. it's very important to learn who really you are when you are single. Be happy, do the things you love most. Some else, someone else will come and embrace and complete the nice person you have created within. I agree completely. And, and, he is, but, but, I don't know if it's a he or she, but he's nailed it. This is a powerful, I think given this is really a powerful, I mean, message that yeah. you put across. Unfortunately, what most people don't do in their singleness is they don't do the work and they don't do the healing. And then, so you are jumping into marriage, you're getting into a relationship with a person, you haven't done your work, you haven't done the healing, you haven't fixed your issues. And we're not saying you should jump into marriage perfect. You just need to do the work that is necessary. Both of you need to have tough conversations and have honest conversation. Have you yeah. done the work? You know, have you done the work that needs to be done for you to be able to heal? I had a Let guy, me tell you, yeah. coach. Oh, okay, go yeah. on, go on, go on first. Then I'll tell you my story exactly. about dealing with the pain. Uh huh. Yeah, I had a guy say something powerful. This guy is is in a marriage. You know. Mm. Uh, and when I heard that statement, you know, this is a couple sitting on their YouTube channel having honest conversation. Now, this is a guy, he's telling his wife and says, you see, if at any point you kind of feel that I am not the man, you know, uh, you know, uh, I am, you are supposed to be with, it would hurt me for you to stay long when you know you can walk away and be happy with somebody else. That's a, would, that's a heavy <laughs> statement. Yeah. I would, now, you see, in our context, especially, yeah, we're pente, we're pente. You know, these human, some of these human beings are a problem. In our context, <laughs> we can't have honest conversations. <laughs> you, know, you know, we would rather struggle. Man, I wish I had, I, have, I wish I had my phone. I got a message, again, 
you know, we can sit for hours, Rev, giving examples. I mean, yes. I just remembered right now as I'm saying this. I got a mm. message two, two, two weeks ago. This mm -hmm. lady just, I didn't even understand. She asked me a question. And mm -hmm. I kind of felt like, maybe near just some of those um, Yama setting. She mm -hmm. says to me, she says, do you regret your divorce? That's what she asked me. She says, wow. do you regret your divorce? And I said to her, absolutely no regrets, zero regrets. Yes. And I left it there. And guess what later the message that followed? She says, mm. I feel exactly that, th that way. I am going through the process of divorce. And I feel exactly how you feel. But my friends and family feel there's something wrong with me. Because I feel relieved that I'm walking away from this marriage I'm not supposed to be in. Now, a person, and I said it on TV. And, and this is one thing I said. And I don't care what you throw stones at me. I don't give a hoot. You know, I'm not on salary by you. You know, <laughs> I said something. I was, I was on TV with Mary and Pastor Waldo and the other people. And I made mm -hmm. this statement. My divorce blessed me. If I didn't go through my divorce, I wouldn't be the man. This is over 10 years ago. This is over 10 years ago. Actually, over, yeah, over 11 years ago. And then somebody says, but why would you say that? And says, I'm just telling you my truth. Our Correct. Community, uh, you know, and I remember, I think it was Auntie Stella, you know, uh, on the show on ZNBC. And she says, but God steady, why would you make a statement like that? And guess what? It's we live in a society that denies us of, one, of, of, of not telling our truth. Steady is a happy man. Yes. You know, I, I, and, and this is not, this is what other people do on social media. I am happy. I never look back and I regret because if mm -hmm. I stay in that marriage, I'm, and I'm not saying anything bad about the person, is that sometimes certain, we force things we know which we are, are not connectable. Exactly. You know, I would be happy with somebody else. She, she would be happy with somebody else. But because we are trying our level best to force where there's no purpose, you know that you're not connecting at a deeper place. But because, you, you know, oh, Tina Chita Gudala contributes 300 to your kitchen party. Tina Chita Gudala contributes 300 to your kitchen party. You see all those things. So those things begin to mm -hmm. play tricks on you. So yes. a society doesn't give the permission to say, I am sorry, but I don't think we can go ahead and get married. I feel there's no... That, sorry, I was going to say that what you're talking about is actually called yeah. the sunk cost fallacy. What is the sunk cost fallacy? Then yeah, I'll come yeah. to my pain and what I dealt with. The yeah. sunk cost fallacy, very simply put, is the tendency to mm. allow past decisions, no, past actions to affect mm. present choices. I'll yeah. say that again. Yeah. The sunk cost fallacy is the tendency to allow past expenses or past decisions to affect current choices. What does that mean if I break it down? This is what it means. You go into a venture, like marriage, but there are many others. It could be business. It could be ministry. It could be an enterprise. And many times with these things, you sink some money, resources, you know, time, effort, you know, knowledge, in, in connections, whatever, you know, you think these things, we'll call them investments, we'll call them money, expenses into this yeah. thing. And then as you sink money into it, as it's progressing, you start to realize that the outcome is not what was desired. Mm. Hmm? This yeah. outcome is not matching the previous perceived, conceived desired outcome so reality is this side desired outcome is this side so in short you're not liking what you're seeing but yeah. then instead of making the decision of saying wait a minute this thing is going this side my desired outcome was supposed to be this side you yeah. do not make the logical decision which is to cut off and count your losses to cut your losses and move on instead you yeah. say ah I invested. You go back. You see now? So you go back into your past. You look at what you've invested. And that investment clouds your capacity to make a rational decision to That's cut powerful. off. 
That's more yes, it's, it's called a sunk cost fallacy. Many people suffer from it. It's the reason people keep investing in businesses that are not working. It's nothing is looking like it's going anywhere, but they keep seeing, you know, throwing good money after bad money. It's the reason wow. people stay on in marriages or relationships. They know it's not working. It's a nightmare, but they keep trying to throw resources in there, hoping, you know, against all hope that this is going to work. It's the reason people stay in careers which they hate with a passion. But because they invested in education, they invested in time, they've got a network, everybody sees and respects them, they go babuana, babuana, they hate the job, but they are there and they are not pulling out. Sunk cost fallacy. So many people are in that space, coach. They are too afraid to call a spade a spade. They are too afraid to face the ugly truth that this thing is not working. Let's come to terms with it. Let's address the elephant in the room. They are too afraid to address the elephant in the room. And that's why we end up with the hypocrisy we just mentioned. We end exactly. up in a situation where you have fake love relationship. You have society-pleasing marriages. You have society-pleasing relationships. You have society-pleasing endeavors, which include fake careers and fake, yeah. you know, paths in life, which have not... You know, for me, I even... No, no, even no, these, no. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, on, yeah, even these, yeah, even these pastors, wait, there are some people who wake up one day, they are a pastor and they say, what the heck? And I'm telling you, I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. So I know. What the heck am I doing here? This In this church on Sunday with these people coming to pray. What am I doing here? You feel like a no, imposter is even better because imposter means you like what you see, but you don't feel worthy. No, this one is a hypocrite you hate the place you hate the whole thing but you are there because you've been put in this straight jacket and everybody's expecting you to do your thing do it do it do it go do it and so yeah. you're, you're going through this whole thing but you know in your heart that mm -mm, i'm not feeling this anymore i am choked i'm dying in here i i wish i could be just able to run away you remember run away yeah. bright you could just yeah. run away, just run, just go. Like, where are you running? I don't know. As long as I'm just running, running where? It doesn't matter. I'm just running, you know. But the truth is, they are running away from themselves because they are refusing to accept the obvious that this thing is not where they should be. And I know, even as we're speaking right now, coach, there are hundreds of people who are going to watch this video now yeah. and in future, and they will resonate with what I've just said. They no, will totally. resonate with and, 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 fake and, and, careers. Yeah. Fake marriages, fake relationships, fake whatever. Everything is fake. You, you, you're not, you're not, even you're not. even where they are sitting is fake. <laughs> Go on. You know. You know. I was speaking. I was speaking on. Uh, was it Friday or Wednesday? I was speaking on Wednesday at Heavenly Non College. I, I always mm. make a statement every time I'm speaking, Rev. And I've said this, and I've said it over. I said there are three critical decisions you will make in your life. One is knowing Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And then number two is your purpose. Amen. And number three True. is the person you're going to marry. Heavy, but, heavy. But if you mess it up with the third one, you have messed it up with the first two. Because I if agree. you're to, to, to a person you're not supposed to be, they will affect your work with God. They will affect your purpose. And your purpose. Assignment. Yeah, you know, because yeah. because they have nothing but to fight you because they were not assigned yes. to help be yes. your man. I was looking at yes. the, you know the judge who's been nominated. I said, look at how the husband has been supportive. This is a man Jackson. who loves his wife enough to be able to say, hey, I am willing to put my life on hold to see you win and succeed because Correct. you winning is part of our assignment. You winning is part of our purpose. Correct. And a lot of people don't realize how powerful it is. And I want us to address, by the way, if I jump out, continue talking, because I'm not at home. I'm, out, I'm far away from home. So my battery for my laptop is going to switch off. I'll try and come in on my phone. But if I don't come in, you can finish this walk. You know, if I don't come back, I'll try okay. and come back. So, so if I go out, you'll still be able to do what you're supposed to do. But here's the okay. thing, Ray. One thing we need to do. And for me, this is my recommendation. I know, I don't know how many minutes we have to wind up. And I know there are some beautiful, uh, you know, uh, comments. comments. We'll continue chatting on the... Yeah. No, but we'll, we'll bring we'll them on the screen because 
because this is really this is a critical conversation rev mm, because mm. i mean i i i you know examples keep coming there's a gentleman right now who is out of this is a professional guy killing it in the corporate circles rev but he's been out of work because of his toxic marriage his marriage has so affected him that he can't even perform. Now, this is an intelligent guy, a guy who went to the best universities. He can't stick at his job because of how ugly his marriage is. You know, and we're out here on social media. We're out here on Sunday. Keep say, come and drop a seed for your marriage to heal. No, people need to go to rehab. People need to fix yeah. a lot of things. So this guy, you know, like, and this is why when you see me show up, I'm passionate about these homes because I know how a bad marriage can affect your professional life. Yes, I've been there. A bad marriage will destroy your business. You know, yes. it's, it's, it's unbelievable. But people kind of feel like, oh, you're just talking. But they've got relatives in their circles. And, and then, by the way, the sad thing, this guy says, I can't share with my church what I am going through. I can't go mm. and tell the Now, you have someone in your church space who can show up in that place to be calm and be vulnerable enough to say, these are my issues. Because one, the church will say, don't mention the word divorce. Don't wish and mention, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the D word. Because what God has put together, let no man, let no man put us under. Mm. So we can't even have a but, healthy but you conversation. See, but the issue there, coach, is was God even involved in the putting together? You see, now, that's, that's, what, what, everybody, really that's what everybody argues because I like to say not every marriage has been put together by God. But Agreed. people don't, you know, people don't want to. No, you guys just want to justify divorce. No, no. we don't want to justify divorce. This is why for me, when I'm doing premarital coaching for couples and say, guys, my job in this premarital coaching session is to help you separate before you get a divorce. So Correct. I, will, I will. And this is what we need to get to fix these things before they get into marriage because fix. marriage is a covenant there's serious bonds exactly. there exactly there's a and, you know, bond. fact, yeah. and before you before you switch off from the battery let me yeah. let me explain what i went through when i went through my divorce yeah i was very shattered because to be honest i i i never pictured never pictured that i would be going through a divorce because i was a pentecostal can never plan for mine too <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know what i mean and then you are in this horrible relationship and i tried my best i mean i did everything that is right as a pastor i forgave yeah. the infidelity i said let's work with this but but my my ex was not for it she just said i'm done i'm out which was fine now when she exited i had to deal with some major paradigms because now the things I prayed about. You see, coach, this is why I realized that prayer without a backing action strategy is useless. Now that's powerful. That now you, mm. you, you, you see why you see you see sorry, I hope you don't lose your flow. I like what no, you no, said. I won't. prayer with what? Mm. Prayer without with what? a backing working strategy is useless. Prayer without a backing working strategy. It shouldn't just be a strategy, it must be a working strategy. Correct. Like a lot of eighty percent of what you're seeing of these troubled, you know, loveless, fake marriages, they are just working on prayer. And you, and at some point, when you're praying, you don't have a strategy. Ulanaka, you just get tired, you get worn out. This is now because you're everything out there. is not working. It's not working. Yeah. It's not working. I mean, you're getting the opposite of what you pray for. That's very discouraging. Yeah, and so yeah. for me, I I lost my business completely. Then my my pastor, whom I loved so much, fell. And, and, and for me, it's not a joke. It's not like, oh, he fell. Oh, he's a human being. No, this man was on a pedestal. I mean, you have to mm. understand that I was, I was, you know, I was new in the faith and I really thought and believed that these are some powerful people. These are men of God. These are icons of morality, beacons of, 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 of godliness. This is, that's yeah. the level that I put this man at. And so when he tumbled and fell, I, I was shattered. I won't even lie. Me, it hurt me. Yeah? And then you're dealing with that, right? You're dealing with the fact that you've lost your business. Your pastor has done a somersault and not a really mm -hmm. simple somersault. I mean, he, he did like a double flip, triple 
bar thing. You know, he did like a really serious somersault. It was, it was not yeah. a funny one, eh? And then you're dealing with that. You're reeling from that. And then now you have this adultery with your wife. Wow. So it was a, a triple whammy. I really got whacked. And then mm. she walks out and she takes my son with her. And the son was taken deceptively. Wow. So there you are. I remember when I got, when I got, when my son was born, I said, you shall always know your father. So I did those Pentecostal declarations on him mm. as a little baby in that hospital bed. And everything I declared went 180 degrees. Everything, coach, I declared went 180 degrees. In short, yeah. everything I did not want to see occurred. Mm. It put me in a mess. Uh, my friend Humphrey tells me I went into a depression. I, I agree with him. You know, but at the time mm. when you're in a depression, nobody really... But you're in you know, depression, so how can you go through depression? <laughs> <laughs> you're telling yourself, <laughs> I'm a Pentecost, I'm a man of God. Terrible, not terrible. Go to I'm telling him about it. So I went into a depression, and thank God for my dear friend. Uh, he may have his shortfalls and whatever, but he's a great friend. He pulled and said, brother, come, mm. let's stay together. You can't stay in this house alone. So I went to stay with him. So we helped each other. He had his issues, I had my issues. Yeah. But that car fellowship kind of worked, you know? And in that yeah. period, the first thing that happened to me, uh, Coach Ted, is God brought a profound message to me. What was that message? Find yourself. Wow. I, it was so powerful because I heard it clearly. God said, find yourself. Because you're at a place where you don't know yourself anymore. You got so lost because you were seeking approval from others. You lost yourself. You became a caricature of what you thought was, mm -hmm. the, was what you ought to be. When in yeah. reality, what you needed is to first find yourself so that you find your purpose. So I had to go through all that coach. I had to yeah. find myself fully. Then when I found myself, then God told me, deal with the pain of the past 100%. That wow. was heavy. He said, forgive. And I'm not talking about just forgiving where you say, I forgive it. Uh -uh. Real forgiving coach. Forgiving where... When you meet the person, the perpetrator of your, of your so-called divorce, yeah. you do not feel anything. Because God told me that time that for as long as you manifest when you meet a person who offended you, you have not truly forgiven. I agree. Wow. I agree. Because I've heard people saying, no, you must forgive and forget. But no, I can forgive, but don't forget. What's that? That's not forgiveness. Divine spiritual forgiveness is completely letting go. And all the emotions and pain that go must also go. So not only, coach, did I have to forgive, but I had to get to a place where I do not even feel because I've seen people, coach said, I've seen people when they say, I've forgiven. Then when they confront, when they meet the person who they've forgiven, they go, I've forgiven. That's not forgiving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> as yeah. long as you're going to manifest, that's mm. not forgiving. And you know, for me, the ultimate test out of coach, about six years ago, I bumped into the gentleman that had been in an affair with my ex-wife. Mm. And I felt nothing, coach, nothing, nothing. As I'm speaking to you today, we do business. We are in wow. a business venture together with that man. I've never raised the topic because it doesn't even matter anymore. Exactly. Because I've moved on. I'm in another dispensation in my life. I'm in a very good place with yeah, my wife, true. with my marriage. I'm at a very, very good place. So, and then, and then let so, me also say, let me, let me also say, sorry to cut your shirt because also this no, is no, go on. This is a foolishness I think I hear a lot from our community and. Uh, uh, you know, our culture and our circle, every time you're going through that, they always tell you that uh, everyone is the same. If you jump out from this marriage, you know, you're going to experience the same. But here you are testifying of a, a better marriage, and we've seen it. We just celebrated your 50. Your wife put out a, a first one on you, you know. A very was, fast one. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. I showed up at your birthday party, and you're saying, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> because, because your wife 
put an amazing one. And this is what we also need to tell. And and then and then this is what we need to have. And I'm glad that you're going deep and sharing these honest conversations because Rev, mm. there's a lot of people that are standing on these pedestals into these big offices, you know, that are wrecked up in messed up marriages, but they don't yeah. want to talk about it because they still want to pre- protect their name, you know, uh, and they don't want to be yeah. seen like challenger going through issues because i tell people marriage is mutual it could be the mm. best man in the whole world but if the other person is not seeing that and they don't feel the same about the marriage nothing is gonna work and this is why i tell people no. nobody wants to get a divorce we you know we no. just didn't show I'm getting married today, and then a few weeks later, I'm getting a divorce. Nobody plans that. You are called <laughs> the marriage because it's mutual. I'm bringing in my yeah. best. Is my is my other person bringing in their best? So you could be bringing in your A game, and your partner is not bringing in their A game, and you get stressed. And here's something I want to before I lose the thought. When you know, by the way, this this whole whole break, break, why are we even diverting? You know. <laughs> no, but it is. It is. It's a, it's a similar. Topic, but you know, because you see, yeah. this is where I want to come. When I was going through my first marriage during courtship, there were, I, I will not even call them red flags. There They're were billboards. placards. There were billboards. <laughs> I just don't want to explain the billboards, my brother. There were billboards like, boom, do not marry with a loudspeaker. <laughs> no, it was the, it was the airport speaker, you know, like everyone can hear it the airport, but you Bing Bong will Walter Mwambazi not proceed with his marriage. <laughs> no, and then you know what I would say? Get behind me, Satan, get behind me, Shakaka, get behind me. <laughs> I mean, there were red flags, my brother, left, right, and center. If, it's just that I can't go into details for the sake of protecting the situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't want to give away too much information. Even if it's social media, there's a limit. But yeah. the red flags were there to a point where two massive billboards came up. One literally stopped the wedding. Like it didn't happen. It was delayed by six months. But still, at always the devil posing. Okay. Uh, you went uh, into the mountains uh, and prayed. Uh, my brother. You did machine and you gun know, prayers. He, and yes, yes, because I was a typical Pentecostal on fire. So <laughs> we just, we used to have this thing at my brother, when situations don't work, just loose bind, loose bind for three <laughs> days in a room, just loose and bind, loose. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, the funny thing about life that is if you're going to lose and bind, my brother, anything will happen. Religion so owes me a refund. Yes, it does. <laughs> Makes the two of us. So, unfortunately, Tinakwati. Ah, <laughs> you, know, you know marriage made in hell. Wow. <laughs> so, when that thing ended... In, you know, the only reason I was so depressed is because I said I'm a pastor, I'm a man of God. Yeah. You know, this is a covenant. What th- does this imply? You know, those yeah. were my issues. But I knew it sucked. But I was still there saying, no, you know, even if it sucks, we can try to maintain the covenant or whatever it is. And yeah. then when I was now going into my second marriage in that ca- in ta- whatever you call it, ca- period, guys, between the first marriage and after my healing, you know, another individual came into my life. When that Mm. individual came in my life, my brother, (laughs) let's put it this way. So for the first time, this will be reviewed on social media. One, this individual was a very powerful prayer warrior. Two, very powerful worship leader. Three, Mm. pastor in training. Four, at Bible school. Come on, go deeper. She, she, she fitted the bill. She carried the billboard saying, my busa. <laughs> Coach. Coach. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I think she suits. Mm, when those flags started coming up, I said, Jesus. I am so not ignoring any flag. This time mm. around, no ignoring of flags. And they came up. Bing, bing, bing. All the time the flags were coming up. And I said, you know what? Mm-mm, mm-mm. And then the funny part now, there I am going through this flag situation. 
I'm really trying to process this whole thing. And then there comes my current wonderful wife, Sivo. She appears. Now, I mean, my wife has grown a lot, so I can say this. She did not fit the bill of a my booth, not in the least. <laughs> this wonderful, wonderful sister was now trying to reconnect back to God. So she didn't have any of that spiritual jive and, and, and stuff. No, she didn't, mm. you know, she was really just trying to fit in. But she did yeah. not, she was, uh, you know, not really on fire. She's trying, but 50-50. Ah, you know, even the kama disposition, the way she carries herself about, she was still too chaloized. Too much chalo. Eh, oh, oh chalo <laughs> Chaloized. <laughs> so, now you look... There's this car, iffy 50 50 babe, very lovely, but not really strong in the Lord uh, at all. She's like just rediscovering, like coming back. And then you've got this fire, Holy like, Ghost, pray for two hours, sister. Mm. <laughs> ah, let me just say it was a hard decision. I won't lie to you. <laughs> because <laughs> because my, my Pentecostal programming. <laughs> eh? My Pentecostal programming was like go for the my busa. <laughs> you, know? mm. you you make a powerful couple. Yes. But my insides were like this kasista, this kawanak. Ka this is the kawan. Ka fifty percent trying her best. Uh, let's get it to fifty plus one. <laughs> at, at what babes? Yeah, that's what she's, she's shouting in the background. She's saying, at least I was real. I wasn't pretending. <laughs> she was as real as they come. <laughs> she never tried so she's to pull any... Makeke, yeah, she's actually... Yeah, she's in the back. At Musanyeshe Makeke, babes. At But you see, it was it was awkward, uh, coach. Awkward. Yeah. Because all I was the, there, I was wittering, I was there. You were there, I remember, coach. Because all the, 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 the things were like, this come on, my boots at that one, this come on, this. But my yeah. heart was like, mm -mm, this one. And, and the funny thing is, when I prayed to God, I was getting peace with her. Mm. Not with her. You see, that's weird. Because my, my intellect and programming was, it you should be this one. So you were, yes, you were it should from be this one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But you see, thank God. Thank God. I like I really thank God every day that somehow I was able to obey. It's not an easy walk. It doesn't matter who you marry. It is a process. I agree. But I, I believe there was obedience. I, I had to face the elephant in the room. I had to pull the plug from my prayer for my Busa sister. I just had to say, Mama, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> and I used the word yesterday, you laughed about it. But yeah. I said, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> not you, it's me. <laughs> I'm the one with issues here. <laughs> so please, please, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> That's yeah. a veteran term but, in these relationship streets. That's term, you know it's, what a, I mean. it's a legend <laughs> term. <laughs> it's a horrible term, actually, to be honest. Oh, what do you mean? I can work it through. We can work out. What is it that you don't want? I'll do anything that you know. In me, I'm at a very bad place. <laughs> Let me deal with myself. I don't know who I am. I'm in a very, very bad place. <laughs> 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 but coach, I was being true, I was being real. Hmm? Yeah? Why go and lie to someone and then spend 10 years of a loveless marriage and then I come out of a second divorce? Nobody will forgive me. Exactly. It doesn't matter, and, and, they'll just say and, you and are and the I'm one glad, with the issue. And, and I am glad these are honest conversations that a lot of people are not having because we need to have them. We mm. need to have these conversations because 
these are conversations that will save a lot of people that are married, you know. And of course, we are not saying jump out, you know, do whatever yeah. it takes to save what you have. But but honestly, some of these things we also say it's just to fulfill all righteousness. Some marriages yeah. were over before they even began. Some marriages yes. were over even before they began. Literally but, at the wedding yeah. day, they are quarreling already. Quarreling, exactly. like serious quarrel. Yeah, going to the know. honeymoon upset with each other. Yeah. True. Exactly, exactly. And we never have these honest conversations because the church is teaching us how to pretend. You know, me, I tell people, yeah. when I, whenever I date, I say, look, no one is taking me through a second divorce. I am getting married to stay married for life. I am exactly. not getting married. I am not getting married. I Look, I have no time to go and sit before the judge. You know, And we are not just getting married to, to say until death do us part. We are going to say happily married until death do us part. So I'm signing up for bliss. I'm signing up for yes. a healthy marriage. And I yes. communicate. This is why people say, oh, Coach Teddy talks too much and the standards are too high. And says, no, you were not there when I was going through that, you know, sitting before the, the You were not there. So you cannot tell me what I should do. And it's a very painful process because you are watching... Exactly. You know, it's 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 mind-bogglingly painful because you know people don't understand. You know, yeah. uh, the, the the marriage counselors teach us so well. They say that when you divorce, it's not a clean cut. Divorce is like taking two papers which were glued together and trying to separate them. I mean, yeah. everyone is going to come out with a piece of the other person, and it takes years to even work that person out of your system. You know, it's not funny. You, you, yeah. you know, it takes long to work the person out of your system. I mean, let me yeah. say something very, very bold on, on air. But, you know, there's nothing I'm saying which I don't talk with my wife already. Yeah. Do you know that I was still having dreams of my wife, even, I mean, my ex-wife, even when I got married? Wow. I had to literally, I'm telling you, I had to get to a point where one day I got a revelation from the Holy Spirit that this is actually a demonic entity that is coming mm -hmm. in the form of your ex-wife. Can you rebuke it? When I rebuked it, that's when it stopped. Now I'm wow. being Pentecostal, but that's what I did. But yeah. imagine, that's the level of mental intertwining that goes on with sexual unions. Sexual unions are not a joke, brother. Mm. When you marry someone and you connect with them sexually, there are deep things that exchange beyond just the fluids. There's things yeah. that happen at a spiritual, soulish level. And you are connected yeah. at that level. So even when you separate, that's why you know this situation, coach. That's why even yeah. when you separate, many times if we're not properly healed, even when we're trying to get into the next relationship, we're still looking for people that are carrying qualities that remind you of your ex. Sure. Very dangerous. Very, Very dangerous. dangerous. And, and you know something, coach? That's why I was getting attracted to the other lady. Because she was the my busa singing in church on fire for Jesus, going to Bible school type of woman. And that's who my ex was. Now you imagine my ex was a fire, fire for fire, typical Pentecostal sister. But she fell into adultery. And I'm not talking this to belittle her in any way, but she fell into adultery. Why? Because for whatever reason, which I'll never really understand, she was not feeling the marriage. Then now, these are real things. And those and those are a conversation to really, really, really have, you know, because mm. I think that's where a lot of people are making mistakes. I mean, today is a Saturday. Yesterday was a Friday. Hundreds of marriages, hundreds of people have come together in a marriage, you know, and, 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 and the things we are discussing are the things they are avoiding. And this is why I think, and this is not to say, oh, come and talk to us. Talk to people that have got experience. Because if you sit before Rev or sit before me, I will tell you what many other people won't tell you because they have a job to yeah. protect as a pastor, as a marriage counselor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Everybody, mm -hmm. I mean, I was talking to one couple I married last December, and he was telling me, he says, I said, how are you guys doing? And says, we're great, operating under the anointing. And here's one thing I, I told them. <laughs> I told them, I told them something. He says, I have no anointing of helping people stay in the Shibikisha marriage. The only mm. anointing I have over my life is bliss for marriage. So if, if, if you are coming under me, after I tell them and says, look, if you're going to abuse your husband and abuse your wife and then come to me so that I can pray for you so that you can stay in this mess, I have that. That's not my anointing. If you guys are getting married and you're coming <laughs> under me, I am helping you to stay in bliss. Because me, Reva, I have no time to help people stay in you know, miserable marriages. And this is why I tell them, no man that is intending to build a tower does not sit down and count the cost. Is this man, is this woman 
that you want to wake up next to and say, I love you for life. And we're not asking for perfection. We're simply saying, I am making this commitment and I am ready to do purpose with you. This is why a marriage must have much more than just getting laid. A marriage must have something we're doing together, we are building together. You know, because at 60, I'm not going to be out there in the pharmacist trying to buy Viagra. No, because I want to keep a marriage. No, I'm not going to do that. You know, I, I mean, I want, I want, I want at 50, we can say, what can we do together for kingdom? What can we do together for purpose? How can I help you build you know what, what I mean? you How can you help me, you mm. know, like build what I'm building? There must be much more than mm. just saying, oh, oh, this the thing, sex. I love you, and all the sweet nothing. There has to be mm. something deep. Mm. 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 I couldn't agree more, brother. And for me, that's what really sobered me up. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a question that is a deep question. Ten years from now, can you wake up to this? Amen. And here's the here's here's the indicator. If deep in your heart, and I mean this, if deep in your heart you are not sure about where you are with that person, don't even move. And here's how you know somebody's not sure. Do you love them? Well, I'm 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 uh, uh. If, if 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 you cannot answer whether you love a person or not with no but or perhaps then that's not your marriage. Because for me, there's a problem right there. And this is, you know, somebody said, <clears throat> knowing your purpose is like knowing whether you're in love or not. Nobody has to tell you. You just know. This is what I was born for. And, yeah. and of course, us as, us as coaches, we help you peel off all the layers to get to that purpose thing. But that's exactly what it is, coach. It's about, <clears throat> do you know the purpose for which you were born? Jesus answered yeah. it so well. He said, it is for this hour that the Son yeah. of Man was brought on this earth. This is it. This whole pilot thing and I'm about to be slaughtered and put on the cross. This was the reason for which I came on this earth. You see, mm. he knew his purpose completely. And when the time for his death came, he went to it. You know, that's the part that just always blows me away. Because, you know, prophetically, you get these words which tell you, no, no, no. Don't come in, don't come in. Oh, you've gone to your phone. Nice. Yeah. Let me wait for the feedback to go. Yes, Rev, go on. Okay. Yeah, you still have the the two mics on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like I was saying, this is the thing where you reach a point. So you see, actually, your camera has got a far better. Sorry, your phone has a far better camera than the computer. Because <laughs> now your, your features are all clear. But the sound is gone, so you need to unmute on your. You're still muted. These are my parts normally on, on YouTube. You've edited me, Shay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still waiting. I still can't hear you, so let me wait. But anyway, like okay. I was saying, <clears throat> ah, there you go. So, like, okay, there was feedback, but it's gone now. Okay, good. So, like I was saying, you know, you need to know who you really are, and in the same way, you need to know how much you love that person. It should not be something where you have to think and dig deep into the recesses of your subconscious to find a car, car, car train of love no 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 no. then for me that's a problematic beginning has there been marriages that have worked where they began with no love i think there are but for me i always look at isaac and rebecca the bible tells me when i even though it was an arranged marriage when isaac saw rebecca and when rebecca saw isaac something happened like there and then boom. and you know that's one of the marriages that Ironically, even if Abraham was a, a polygamist, Isaac wasn't. And that's just amazing. Eh? Although they went through the same, they battled the same demons. But it's just amazing that Isaac was able to remain very faithful with his wife, you know. And yet it was an arranged marriage. So for me, I always think there must be something divine. There must be something unique that is God-ordained. And you don't doubt it because it shows right there. Your mic is still off. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, so it must be yeah. ordained and it must be God given. And for me, that's, I think, our closing here as we wrap up. 
yeah. think it's very important mm -hmm. for people on the call to realize that if you're one of those that is yet mm -hmm. to, to tie the knot, yet to get married, True. please deeply reflect within yourself and ask yourself, is this really, really the woman or the man I should be yeah. with? Or is it a case of there's so much pressure from True. all across? We've been together for a long time. I think let's just stick with this. And I do understand that there's also the detractor. You know, there are detractors. Eh? I, I need to also warn with that one. There are those people that the devil brings. They kind of draw you off track. You fall yeah. into a terrible pit. And then you miss mm. the very gem that God had prepared for you before. Now because that's now a good you're going to a horrendous that, thing. That's but a by good By the balance. time you come yeah. back, you've lost what was a good thing. So sure. I think that when we must remember, there's also such things. So yeah, I think that's and, a good balance to really bring in. I, and and I think for for me the key thing as we conclude and just wind up is, uh, you know, make sure if when when you're making that decision, you're making a decision out of a good place. Uh, it's not peer yeah. pressure. It's not because you want to impress people. You want to excite people, make people feel great. You know that you 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 married this person. You know, like again, every time like when we are speaking, there's always ideas that come. There's a young lady who sent me a message and she was saying every man that she's brought and taken to 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 her family, the mother has disapproved because the mother has got a standard of a type of a man she marries. Now she's frustrated because the men that have come in a way you know, uh, you know, are going out there to be happy with other people. So I think the balance that Rev brought to the conversation of saying, hey, listen, if you are in a relationship, you know that this person and you can do purpose together. You know, you don't have anything beyond just having kids and the physical part of a relationship. There's no purpose. You know, you know that you're not coming together. You're not building. Look at what your wife, you can start off where you are with your wife because I've been part of the process. But look at how your wife uh, is lost into what you saw. So when you saw at the beginning, it didn't make sense. But look at where that has been true you know, uh, in, in, in the space that has brought you. So you have to be able to see something that is deeper when you're making this decision, but it shouldn't be a decision because people want you to make that decision to please them and to excite them, you know, because you're going to, like I always say, you know, you're going to be this man who's on social media 24-7 lying to women. I wish I met you before I met my wife. You know, can we meet for coffee? I'm not going to be that man. If I'm getting married, I'm getting married to stay married. I'm getting married to stay in my house. I'm not going to yes. be out in social on Friday, I'm thinking, how can I run away? Can you imagine what what you did to these fake marriages when it was COVID? You are stuck in a house with with your roommate. That's why the that's why the divorce the divorces went up. Remember, COVID period. Yeah, exactly. Divorces went up because now it, people exactly. are stuck in their homes with their wives. Yeah. Mm. So so I think for me the key thing is don't be under pressure by culture. Don't be under pressure because people want you to do certain things. Don't be under pressure because you want to keep people. You know, you're gonna be out there. I actually say the same thing. We wanna be there with them now. We have to be service, not in that sense. Sexually, emotionally, you know, we have to be the man who's trying to you know, fill up the gap that that man is not delivering at home. You want to be talking to us. No, you are a married woman. No, you are married, you're in a relationship, you're dating. So what's the point of being in a relationship when you want external people to meet the needs of the relationship? Be there if your wife meet the, the expectations of the person you decide. And this is why when you're getting into a relationship with a person you can do purpose with, you enjoy being together. It's not a drag. Yes. You know, it's not, yes. You're not doing it for fellow righteousness. You know, oh, is that your wife? I just imagine. No, you are not. You're not. You're not. You're not, you're not <laughs> <laughs> from that space, you know, my wife, my husband, I, I enjoy them. And does that mean that there won't be other people that look like they're advertising something amazing? There would definitely be there. This Always. is why marriage, love is a full time job. Work with what yes. God has blessed you, investing the best, putting the best that you can be. So you are not out here trying to, you know, do something with everybody you meet in the street, you know, you, you, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy. So I think for me, that's what I would be able to say. And if you miss this message, if you are listening to us, you're in a marriage or you are dating and you're listening to us and you go on and have an ugly marriage from this point, I think the blood is on your shoulder because we have been, <laughs> yeah, because we've been as, as vulnerable. You've just done a master's in marriage. 
in this, mm. you know, one hour, 40 minutes. You've done a master's in marriage. So if this, you're still confused uh, and you still go ahead and do what, you're, what, 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 what you don't want to do, it's up to you. This is why I feel yeah. before, this is I receive love. I have expectations. You will not love me how you want to love me. You know, because I need to make sure that this is what I'm bringing to the table. I want to love you right, and then I hope you 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 do the same as well. So for me, I think uh, you know you've given you've you've made the examples of what other people have been able to do, mistakes other people have been able to make, including our mistakes. You know, able yeah. to uh, you know to, to go through the thing. I'll tell you the truth. For me, when I was this time, I want to be healthy in love. I don't want to be insane in love. When I got married the first time, Rev, I. <laughs> I was madly in love. Like, my brain was not functioning right. You know, you are seeing all the red flags, but because I, I actually tell people I was a junior messiah. I was the assistant Holy Ghost. I will, will fix this in the marriage. We'll sort, we'll sort it out, you know, you know. You know, oh, you don't feel the love. I'll feel it. We'll come back. <laughs> you know, so don't make mistakes that some of us make. You know, and then also, I'll t- the last thing, I, I know we are concluding, the last thing I will say is <laughs> when you are too needy, when you are too broken, and you are hoping other people to not fill up that void, don't get married, bro. Don't even get, please, yeah, stay away. You stay know, he, away. You know, yes. he work on yourself, you know, just mm. you get it there, bring the whole you into your relationship. Don't bring yeah. Okay, so in case this is still going on live, uh, thank you, everybody. I guess uh, Coach's internet has given up. And so that means I got to say goodbye and uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to get the thing to switch off afterwards. But either way, it's been wonderful. We've shared deep, deep, deep things. And I'm praying that for you who are watching and have been following this one and a half hours plus is a whole movie. Oh, there you are. So I was just doing the bye bye thing. I was I was actually saying bye. <laughs> so I was telling them I hope they enjoyed. I hope they followed. You're muted, actually, Coach. Uh, but I hope they were able to follow and they were able to gain deep things. Even the last statement there you made, Coach, very important. Uh, do not make the mistake of being junior Jesus, <laughs> trying to save people. No one can save mm-hmm. a person. They mm-hmm. can only save themselves. And you cannot go in there to try and fix people. Fixing people doesn't work. You can only work with people that are whole and people that are willing to go through their own personal fixing. And you should never go into a relationship to be affirmed by another. You must first affirm yourself. Women are very good at this. My wife says it all the time. You must Mm -hmm. first affirm yourself. You must first be pleased with yourself and who you are. Know yourself deeply then you can bring a better person to your partner. Not yeah. that thing where mm-hmm. you're looking for the mm-hmm. other person to affirm you all the time. Because I'm telling you, you're going to go mad. If you're waiting for someone to affirm you, you will go sick. What if you're with one of those men that doesn't know how to affirm because they come from a background where they, were, they never saw affirmations. They came from yeah. a background where their mm-hmm. father said, Hey, Mwapika! Hey, <laughs> hey, you know, now this is this is the model they grew up with, right? <laughs> and, then, and then now this is all you know, this is how you show love. You show love by saying, Hey, one big year. Hey, now you believe you think you think that's normal. No, no man's like, I don't say. So you see, now when you marry a person like that, you need to know that you must affirm yourself because they're not going to be affirming you. And then in the process, you can start helping them by telling them, you know, when you talk, Bala, do you talk like that when we are? (laughs) My wife has said a very funny comment. I can't even repeat it. (laughs) So anyway. In a a slow motion voice. (laughs) Yes, it's a hilarious comment. I can't even say it. It's too X-rated, but but <laughs> but basically, you know, we you, you know these women need to tell their husbands. At the show, they will have to be more by bed. Show, mama come back. Hey, Fulham, you have to be, you have to be romantic. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be romantic, you know. 
So I mean, carry that same voice everywhere, you know. So, so this is how you work with people, you know. Somewhere along the way, you know, by God's grace, you know, they change, you know. And then you, you start enjoying your marriage somewhere down the line, you know what I'm saying? But it's been awesome, Coach. I really, really have been no, blessed, it's, brother. It's, it's been amazing. Uh, thank you so much. It was a great conversation. And then here's one thing I'm going to say. If 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 some if if you're watching and you're saying you want to you want us you want me and Rev to do something, maybe it's a half day or a full day relationship, marriage, divorce, recovery, you can inbox Rev or can you can inbox me. If we get 20 people that are willing to pay, because people want free things, I don't do free stuff. So let, let's do this, coach. Let them inbox you. So that you keep okay. tally properly, just in case. But anyway, okay, cool. you can also inbox me. But I would definitely also refer you to to Coach Ted, uh, so yeah. that Coach Ted keeps a tally. And then once we get the number, then yeah, then it happens. And and then, and then this is not because we wanted to do it because this is this was not part of the plan. But if you are saying no, okay, no, no, help me, I'm single, married. So it's gonna be a mixture of what we did, you know, uh, what we are just doing today, talking about dealing with these issues. If you want to just say, I want a happy marriage, I want a healthy relationship. But I also want to heal. I also just want to become a better person. That's what I want. So if we get 20 people, we can do something. And you must be willing to make an investment. And we're not saying, because people don't realize that hosting an event, hiring a venue requires money. People always say, oh, so is it going to be free? And then what are we going to pay if we're using an event, you know, Correct. place? You get on and all to the say, logistics that go with putting something together. There's always logistics. Yeah. So we want, we want, we want, we don't need to do it. Uh, we don't need to do it. But if you want to you can inbox me, you can inbox Rev and saying, and it doesn't matter where you are, whether you are healing, you're on separation, you are married, you are divorced. And you notice you will not sit in our room and feel judged. We are not that type of mm-hmm. If you are in a happy marriage, never been through a divorce, we'll clap for you, we'll celebrate you. If you're on separation, we'll cover you, help you heal and help you recover. You know, so so you this is the safest place you will ever get to. Because some of Correct. these church meetings, I can't even go, some of these relationship meetings, they're too they're sister and Jesus is because they've never paid anything. <laughs> I can go to, I love what Bishop T.D. Jakes says. I, Bishop T.D. Jakes says, I can't get a mentor who's perfect and has got it together. I want a mentor who's going through issues in their lives because then yeah. they can help me pull out and be where I'm supposed to be. So if you're sure. looking at that, inbox Rev, inbox me, and then we'll be able to do something. No pressure. But hey, thank you so much. Rev, it was wonderful. God bless you. Have a wonderful one. God bless you. Same as awesome. well. Cheers, brother. Finally, I see that.